this session. Mainly, uh, we have two very eminent speakers, one on bone marrow transplantation and one on chelation. Our first speaker is Professor Petru Sudani. He is an authority in bone marrow transplantation and special interest and experience in the haploidentical transplantation. He is going to give us a talk on bone marrow transplant in thalassemia from HLA identical transplant to HLA non-identical. Please, Professor Sudani, welcome. Please, 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 would you please shut off your phone? Hi. Good morning. And first, I would like to say thanks to invite me in this wonderful meeting. Particular thanks to Professor Amal Beslavi, he's my friend. And this morning, I don't know exactly what, but now we go to start because uh, sure, you know thalassemia disease better than me, I'm sure about that. But what I would like to, to offer to you is just a short history about the history of the bone marrow transplant in thalassemia. Because we know everything about, we know everything about thalassemia disease, about the bone marrow, tra bone marrow transplant in thalassemia. But uh, just, just to stop for one second, but how? Uh, was born the idea of the bone marrow transplant in non-malignant disease, especially focused in thalassemia disease. It's a very brief history. Uh, I like it very much, and I hope that you enjoy a little bit. About the history of the thalassemia, it's very, very old. It's from Phoenician history. And in uh, 1925, the American pediatric school in Lee described a disease named Cooley anemia in children of Italian and Greek immigrants. In 1943, Ezio Silvestroni and Ida Bianco have described a hereditary anomaly in the dualized in healthy subject that has been named microcytemia. So, but the, the principal actor of the history of the thalassemia, if we think about the bone marrow transplant, is the stem cell. So, let me introduce myself. I'm a stem cell, good morning. And if we think like a fable, like a romantic fable, once upon a time in Trebbiantico. Where is Trebbiantico? Trebbiantico is very, very little village very close to Pesaro, more than 45 years ago. There was a man, my professor and my big friend, Professor <coughs> Guido Lucarelli. Yes, I feel emotion when I think about him, because he's a one of the wonderful hematology in the world, but in Italy, like the Latin say, Nemo Profeta in Patria. Not all the scientific Italian community appreciate him. But look this. In 1968, they start to thinking and studying about fetal and neonatal erythropoiesis. And start a transplant of fetal liver. Sure, it's experimental from mouse, from rat, from sheep from mini pig from Arabian Oats. And the idea is that a fetal liver is able to repopulate the bone marrow. Now, we stay in uh, 75, 76. So we talk in very, 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 very easy words. Fetal liver is able to repopulate the bone marrow. This is the fetal liver. If we try to do something like this, no, if we try to do, if we try to think, I think that we are going in prison, everybody. But this is a section of the fetal liver. And as you can see, it's full of stem cell. There is no HLA typing, no, no many procedure that we have to use now. And they start to describe the idea of the source of the hematopoietic stem cell from transplantation, feed the liver, core blood, bone marrow, peripheral blood. 
1979, there was the first international fetal liver transplantation. The president was Guido Lucarelli, Theodor Flinner, Robert Peter Gale. And the experience of Pesaro is in five patients, what, well, I don't know, affected by aplastic anemia. And as you can see, all, all, all of them developed an uh, autologous reconstitution. But the idea is that maybe the fetal liver stem cell is able to work. In 1968, from the Seattle group, there was the first evidence that fetal cell that repopulate the recipient's hematopoiesis had failed to switch. One of the possible mechanisms of control of gamma to beta switching is the environment induction. So all this discussion, just to anticipate, that we start to think about the idea of the bone marrow transplant in non-malignan disease. And to confirm, now we move from a modern area, 2008, liver transplant. Donor was a man, recipient's woman, not identical transplant. Nine months plus bone marrow transplant changed the blood group. After 10 months, there was a hemolytic anemia. 30 months, the marrow chimeries show mixed chimeries, 50% male, 50% female. After 40 months, is full donor. Two years, two years post bone marrow transplant, still full donor. And five years plus, liver and bone marrow was from the donor, so, so complete hematopoietic chimerism. All the discussion, just to anticipate why we start to focus 35 years ago around in thalassemia, in a non-malignant disease with erythropoiesis, with inefficacy erythropoiesis. And sure, as we see this morning, Thalassemia disease is a progressive disease. In 1995, Professor Nancy Olivieri concluded that bone marrow transplant can be offered as therapy to a minority of patients with thalassemia, and she is absolutely right. Now, thanks to the experience to the bone marrow transplant from MAT, bone marrow transplant from core blood, bone marrow transplant from apolidentical transplant, we can say that thalassemia major can be cured and bone marrow transplant can offer the possibility to cure for the majority of patients affected by thalassemia. And today, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation remain the only curative option for patients with thalassemia. This is a part of our experience in uh, 1,150 HLA identical transplant in thalassemia, age one through 35 years old, the thalassemia free survival was 70%. The median age at the time of the transplant was 10 years old. Everybody now knows about the risk class for bone marrow transplant in thalassemia on the basis of the collation hepatomegaly and fibrosis. And for patients in class one and class two, we use the protocol six, busulfan 14, cyclophosphamide 200. And using this protocol, in a group of 146 class one patients, the thalassemia free survival was 87%. No regression mortality, 10%. Regression rate, 3%. Using this protocol in a class two patient, the thalassemia free survival was 85%. But when we try to use the same protocol, busulfan 14, cyclophosphamide 200, in a class three patient, it's not working very well because the thalassemia free survival was 47%. The no rejection mortality was very high, 47%. The rejection rate, 12. 
So we try to decrease the total dose of cyclophosphamide from 200 to 120, 160, but we pay in terms of increase of rejection, 30%. So the first conclusion that for the young class preparation, the problem was the excessive rejection from the adult was the excessive toxicity. When we're talking about patients in class three, we're talking about patients with this grade of liver damage. And from the morphological point of view, this is a section of the young bone marrow patient. You can see that the erythroid expansion, you can compare this with the chronic myeloid leukemia in terms of, sure, in terms of erythroid cell. But the situation is a little bit different respect the adult. This is a section of the thalassemic patient that is more than 17 years old. It's a, from the morphology point of view, but for us, what's really, really important, I show to you why. In 1997, we start with a, a new conditional regimen that we call Protocol 26. We start to thinking about the preface also in thalassemia patient because the thalassemia patient is not that leukemia patient that at the time of the transplant is arrived from chemotherapy induction. No, it's absolutely virgin from chemotherapy. So we start 45 days before bone marrow transplant using hydrosurea and azathioprine with a short course of fludarabine, the buff group, young and adult, receive busulfan-14, but the young, the problem is the rejection. The erythroid expansion is dramatic. The total dose of cyclophosphamide was 160. From the adult, the problem was the toxicity. The total dose of cyclophosphamide was reduced to 90. Using this protocol, in a first, 33 class free patients, the thalassemia free survival was 85%, the no rejection, the rejection rate was 80%, the no rejection mortality is 6%. So, as I told before, political is political, health is health. We move from Pesaro to Rome. And the Rome experience is characterized by two peculiarities. The patients were ethically very heterogeneous, and this patient could have high risk of blood failure as results in sensitization of HLA antigen. We accept patients from Kuwait, Iraq, Kurdistan, Lebanon, Maldives. We are, thanks to Professor Amal Al-Beslavi, a very close collaboration with Egypt. And um, I'm not stopping a problem of our immunization that you know better than me, but we start to replicate the same model, protocol 6, protocol 26. In the class 1, the thalassemia free survival is 89%. In the class 2, the thalassemia free survival is 93%. In the class 3, using the protocol 26, in 80 class 3 patients, the thalassemia free survival was 82%. So the conclusion is that maybe we have a model that we can replicate in other parts of the world. And during the last year, we start to improve the results in the class preparation with the addiction of the Tayotepa. So just to modify the conditional regimen, busulfan, cyclophosphamide, Tayotepa, 10 milligram per kilogram daily, a short course of fludarabine and cyclosporine, methotrexate and prednisone to prevent the graft versus host disease. And in uh, the cumulative incidence of the rejection, in the modified protocol was zero. Respect the original protocol that was 15. The thalassemia free survival in the modified protocol in more than 10 years of experience, the free survival was 92%, respect the original protocol that was 73%. Now, we move from 
because when you're talking about non-malignant disease, we have to mention also sickle cell disease. And I, uh, no problem. And another another big chapter of the patho of the pathology of the red cell is sickle cell anemia. And some years ago, me and Professor Lugarelli, we went in Nigeria with these fantastic hematologic colleagues that they know the management of the sickle cell in a perfect way. And, sorry, we would like to start a program of bone marrow transplant in sickle cell disease. The first point is transplant all the children with a naturally identical sibling as soon as possible before sickling complication. It is estimated that more than 100,000 children are born with SCA in Nigeria each year. And in a rural part, Nigeria, only 20% of SCAT patients survived up to five years of age. In Rome, we accept patients affected by sickle cell from African and not a non-African country. We, and we divided two protocols. For the non-black African variant, we use busulfan cyclophosphamide ATG. For the black African variant, we use fludarabine busulfan cyclophosphamide. This is just for identification of the right risk of patient. Some transcranial Doppler, MRI, high resolution CT scan, clinical and lab parametrics. All patients tolerate conditioning without serious adverse events, not sickle anemia related events. And the, our experience in 46 transplant in SCA, transplant from HLA identical donor, the disease flow survival was 91%. So the first conclusion is that Stem cell transplantation in SCA offer more than 90% of cure rate. But the problem is, what, what can we do for the other group of patients that uh, is not able to found a naturally identical donor? More than 10 years ago, we start from apple identical transplant program using a CD34 positive selection. The background was that approximately 30% of patients have a match relate donor and less than 62% of non European can find a match unrelated donor. The lack of the donor registry and cost of recruiting Unrelated donors make MAP transplant unaffordable for the developing countries where many patients with hemoglobinopathy resides. We examine the outcome of children with hemoglobinopathy given CD34 positive selection to alpha beta CD19 deplate haplograft. About the eligibility of patient, the patient was less than 70 hours, transfusion dependent, SCA with repeat vasoclusive crisis, adequate organ function, lack of HLA match related or unrelated donor. In the first pilot study published in 2010 using mother-like donor and CD34 positive selection, the thalassemia free survival in 22 thalassemic patients was 62%. To compare, the general patient population was 54 patients. The first group using CD34 positive selection was 40. The second group using alpha beta T cell depletion was 14. We use the same condition regimen. It is on the same line of the protocol 26, but we start two months before the bone marrow transplant with using hydrosurea, azathioprine, fludarabine, no different in young and adult, 
and we use busulfan 14, cyclophosphamide 200, ATG, Tayotepa, and MMF and cyclosporine to prevent graft versus host disease. There is no difference in terms of engraftment kinetics, in terms of white cell and platelet count. Bowel rejection. The first group using a CD34 positive selection, the graft failure was 42% respect the alpha beta that was less, 40%. No association between GVAT failure and patient disease and treatment relate variable, age, sex, ferritin, number of blood transfusion, risk class, donor type, HLA mismatch, type of disease, and CD34 positive cell dose. The only difference is in terms of anti-HLA antibody, and in particular, donor-specific antigen. Regarding the survival, the overall survival in a group of alpha-beta was 84%, in a group of positive selection was 78%, and regarding the disease-free survival in alpha-beta was 69%, respect the positive selection that was 39%. Just to, just to underline that the better results is in the young population. So the message is transplant as soon as possible. And we did not identify any relevant difference in terms of development of graft versus host disease and also in terms of extensive chronic graft versus host disease. Also, not different in terms of viral reactivation. The only difference in, is in the development of the lymphoproliferative disease, ABB, ABB lymphoma. Respect the group that received rituximab before the transplant, respect the group that did not receive rituximab. And also, in terms of the immunological reconstitution, in the buff group, we identified only one year after the transplant a partial normalization in terms of CD3, CD4, CD8, and CD9 compartments. The cause of that is the bacterial pneumonia, perianal abscess, CMV pneumonia, lymphoproliferative disease, aspergillosis, and chronic graft versus host disease in megacolon. Now, as I told before, politically political health is health. The Italian government decided that Hime Foundation in Rome must be closed. It's the second time. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly why. So now, I don't know. <laughs> so now, personally. I start a very close collaboration with the Charity Hospital in Berlin and with the Regensburg Hospital in, in, uh, in Germany with Professor Celingo Basholu. And we start uh, a new, as I can tell, a new protocol that we would like to focus especially in uh, sickle cell and in SCA. I'm, I'm going very, very fast about the classical presentation of SCA with the splenic sequestration, sepsis, acute syndrome, and stroke. The problem of the SCA in developing countries, we, we just said before, but we start from this. This is the outcome after HLA identical sibling transplant in worldwide. As you can see, the five years event free survival is 70%. But the problem is always the same, the possibility to found an HLA identical donor. And we start with the first pilot trial in 25 patients to compare the results in matched sibling donor in Apollo, in, in Apollo using CD3, CD19 depletion respect alpha beta CD19 depletion. We use the same conditional regimen in Apollo and in identical transplant. ATG 
Tayotepa, Fludarabin, and Treusulfen. And cyclosporin, tacrolimus, and mycophenolato to prevent the Grub versus os disease. In Apollo, we observe 99% of chimeries. And is the same that the chimeries that we observe in matched sibling donor. There is no relevant difference in terms of uh, acute graft versus host disease and also in terms of chronic graft versus host disease. In Apollo, the overall, free survi the overall survival was 95% respect match sibling donor that was 100%. The disease-free survival was 95%, in match was 100%. The toxicity-related mortality in Apollo was 50%, in match was 0%. So the conclusion is that we obtain a comparable outcome between match and Apollo Apple transplant in patient with advanced state of sickle cell disease. No difference in terms of chimeries, no difference in terms of developing the graft versus host disease. And fluda, triosulfan, tiotepa, and ATG is well tolerated condition and regimen. So we start this new trial design. And is my invitation. Everybody are welcome to participate. Is um, at the moment is that with Lebanon, France, USA, Germany, Tanzania, and Austria. But we are really, really, we are really well welcome to everybody. And the conclusion we told before, I would like just to say thanks to. Professor Guido Lucarelli, the former scientific director of the IME Foundation, the pioneer of the transplant in thalassemia, and thanks to Professor Selim Gorbacholu, and thanks to Professor Angelica Eger to Charity Hospital. I finish. Thank you very much for the attention.